Welcome back to House TV Live. I'm Rick Spence, and with me today is Randy Angel with Randy Angel Designs in Plano, Texas. He does amazing pool work, architectural design, landscape design, everything soup to nuts, winning all kinds of awards and doing so much amazing work. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing one of your clients' pools with us. Well, thank you. That's quite the intro. Well, I imagine when you have a blank slate like this, this is a dream for you. This was essentially a rectangle in a backyard with sod. Let's talk about the main elements and what was important to them in this yard. So we had, you know, really, we'll, we'll call them three key elements that they wanted to accomplish in the space. One being the water element, the pool and spa area. So that was really kind of the beginning point of that whole design was to create that water element, that first central focal point that would draw you in. Um, another element being a, a secondary covered seating area with the fire. And the third key element for them was creating this really cool golf putting green. You know, the space, because it is just a, a very long, narrow yard, it kind of laid itself out when it came to, you know, creating and positioning these three elements. In thoughts for placing the uh, shaded area for the fire pit seating, I took into account the direction of the sun and where we would be best positioned to, to capture some shade in those late afternoon, early evening hours. And so I positioned that as you come into the yard, that's the west end of the, the yard. So we get really good shade there in the evening. And then on that far end of the pool, a little bit less visible from the house, then we have that beautiful putting green area, um, which is just encased in this really rich garden landscaping that makes it a really special space. Tell me about the materials you need to use and your considerations there when it comes to durability, beating of the sun. Basically, I'm seeing mostly concrete across the entire yard, right? Yes, we did use a colored concrete for all of the decking on this project. The stone that we used around the pool is a, a stone called Luter Limestone, and it's actually quarried here in West Texas, out in Luter, Texas. And then, of course, we brought in the element of the Ipe wood decking around the fire pit. That Ipe is repeated in the shade structure, but then also in the horizontal screen that you see at the back focal point of the pool. That Ipe is tough wood too. You get a it lot is. of years out of the Ipe, right? Yeah, I always tell a client, you know, if you can invest the money in it, go with the Ipe. It's a natural wood and it's a very dense, hard wood that will last forever, but it is on the pricier side. So, you know, it does have to play right into the overall budgets of a project. Tell me about how you sort of balanced some softening of the concrete throughout the design and how you did that. You know, that's one element that has really been transformed recently by just the, the increase in quality in synthetic turf, because it's always nice to bring in that softening element of some sort of greenery, but especially here in Dallas, the maintenance of that when you're talking about 106 degree days through the month of August and trying to keep something alive in this you know, sea of concrete, it was difficult. But now the synthetic turfs are so amazing. And so we've really had some cool opportunities to bring in this synthetic turf just to help soften the feel of these spaces. So often you can have you know, just this sea of concrete or this sea of stone surrounding the pool. And it's just not as engaging as, you know, bringing in some softness with the synthetic turf and other types of plantings around the pool. And tell me a little bit about the scale, how you kind of decide how large those rectangles will be and the turf, because this just feels right. And there's a reason for it, and I want to know what that reason is. <laughs> well, I appreciate that because <clears throat> I think it feels right, too. Um, and it really is. It's dictated by the space. So much what, uh, of what a designer does is work through the right scale and balance in a space. So in a space like this, it's not a huge yard, but it's it's very long and narrow. And so I played off of that shape 
with the, the size of these pads, they're somewhere around three and a half feet by maybe six feet long, kind of a generously sized pad so that it really ultimately makes the space feel larger than it is. If you had this sea of smaller pads with turf in between, it would get so busy and really end up making the space feel smaller. Really, really beautiful. Let's go a little bit more into the pool. It, so if you're considering an in-ground pool, what are some of the key decisions you're going to have to make? First element to consider is whether you want a deep pool or a shallow pool. It's kind of the, the starting point conversation. We don't do a lot of deep pools any longer. It's really more about creating a, a shallow play pool where they can play water volleyball and water basketball. But then you you know start to think about some of the key elements and how you'll use that pool. One of the really popular things to do now is to create that shallow ledge in the water where you could have the chairs in the in the water. We call that a wet deck. I have a wet deck on the majority of our designs because it is a really popular feature. We're all trying to do that anyways when we're in the pool on those little floaties. Right. We're in the pool and we're kind of throwing the water on. Just yeah. set yourself up with a wet deck and you're good to go. It's a, it's a really nice space. And then, of course, you know, the, the thought of whether or not you want to do a spa or a hot tub. This particular pool has a nice oversized spa. And that's one element that people with younger children, one of the things that I always have them consider is, you know, if we do a bit larger spa, it really can act as the swimming pool during the cooler seasons because you can easily heat up that smaller space it up to 90 or whatever in the middle of December, it gives a, a nice play pool for the kids. So for someone who does want to play volleyball in the pool or sports, what's sort of the ideal depth you're seeing? Three, four feet? What is it? Yeah. So, you know, typically what I do, you know, at each end of the pool, it's going to be a bit more shallow. So we start at three and a half feet um, on the ends and then put that deeper point in the center of the pool. And so that's where your volleyball net would go across the pool. And we typically do about four foot nine in water depth at that point. And that seems to be kind of a good, you know, average between the shorter people and the taller people um, and, and set you up nicely for the water volleyball. Nice. Kids can still jump in from the sides, cannonball, whatever they need to do. They cannonball off of this water uh, feature on this pool, that raised wall. Is that is that serves as the cannonball spot? Yep. <laughs> uh, I love it. What about lighting? Is there lighting, peripheral lighting, as well as in-pool lighting for this space? Yeah, it's important to do a combination of lighting in these outdoor spaces. So, of course, you know, inside the pool, we want to focus on some really good LED lighting. Um, I tend to use numerous smaller light fixtures as opposed to, you know, you think of the, the old fashioned swimming pool light that was just this giant 500 watt light beaming <laughs> at you. You know, we want something a little more subtle and, you know, a little, little more calm. So we'll use multiple smaller lights. I think this pool has probably five or six lights down the length of it. Um, and so what that does, and they're color LED lights, and what that will do then is just really give a nice even wash of light down the length of the pool. Let's go over to the deck area and tell me about the fire feature how you did that, and talk about how you plan that out. So at that end of the pool, I really did want to bring in a nice natural feel by bringing in that Ipe wood, warm up the whole space. And so by creating a little raised deck area surrounding that fire pit, you know, we're, we're creating another room. And for this one, I created a, a long linear fire feature there, which is filled with the fire glass that is a color that kind of matches the color of the pool. So you just have that nice continuity, you know, between the materials there. It's amazing how much bigger it looks with all the stuff in it. It's, that's Completed. how it, it always looks so, works. <laughs> it's amazing how that works, because when you look at the before photos, you're looking at 
man, we can we put a pool back here? Can we really make yeah. this happen? And then you see it afterwards. You're like, oh, why didn't we do this sooner? This is amazing. It is one of those amazing things that, you know, good design will really expand the feel of the space. And it happens time and time again. We have a lot of uh, properties here in, in Dallas that are very small yards. So it's not uncommon for us to get the phone call. I don't think we can fit anything, but, and I always tell them, you know, it's amazing um, just how much difference it makes when you bring in good design and a good spatial layout, the, the balance and, and scale of the design will expand a small space and make it feel much larger. Great stuff. Well, thank you for taking the time with us today. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to more of your amazing work. Thank you for the opportunity. It was great chatting with you. Thanks again, Randy. All right. Have okay. a good day. Okay. We'll see you. Bye-bye.